Eric Moore with Moore.com. In this video, I want to go back to the basics. And what I'm going to do is, so here is an explanation for what the relative strength index is. Just want to highlight something here and I'll show you a chart here that will explain what I'm trying to get across. Now, if we take a look at this explanation here for what the RSI is, I want to capture what they say here which is that the traditional interpretation of the usage of the RSI is that RSI values above 70 or above indicate that a security is becoming overbought or overvalued and therefore it may be primed for a trend reversal. So in other words, when you're coming into the market for the first time and you're trying to study the RSI, most of the resources, textbooks, and online blogs, and um, pretty much most of the information you're going to come across is going to steer you into believing that whenever the RSI moves above 70, you can expect that the instrument is overbought, overvalued, and therefore may be primed for a trend reversal lower. Now, I have been preaching that this is not true. Let's take a look at an example. This example is going to be a little bit on the extreme side, but it still makes sense to take a look at it. So let's follow along here. Here's a stock that was trading at about $3.48 sometime in middle of September 2017. And you can see at this point the RSI was at 62 and change. Now if we fast forward to the next day, you can see the stock stages a very big move up about 64%. So we can see a big move here in price, 64% gain for the day. RSI is now trading above 70 and that is pretty much at 81.18. So if we go with the textbook explanation, we start looking for a sell signal because the textbooks are telling us to sell or to be looking to sell when the RSI is above 70 even though in the description of the video I'll explain to you why it is not 70 it should actually be at 69.1 but that's for another another day so RSI is at 81 and by the textbook this means we start looking for a reason to sell. Let's fast forward to the next day. Now this is September 20th. The stock gains another 7%. RSI is still above 69.1. Let's take a look at what happened the next day. Take a look at this day. The stock was down about 5%. but the RSI is now at 77. So the RSI is still above 69.1. Textbooks are telling you to sell. My method indicates that we should stay still with a bullish expectation because the RSI is above 69.1. Let's fast forward to the next day. Now we're in September 22nd. The stock jumps up another 18%. And now the RSI is at 82.49. RSI is still above 69.1. The textbooks would tell you to look for a sell signal. And here we are saying that as long as the RSI is above 69.1, that is a sign of strength. That is what I'm saying. That's what I've been trying to explain in my channel for many years. Let's fast forward to the next day. The stock gains another 19% and the RSI is now at 86 and change. Let's fast forward again and we can see another 10% gain on September 26th, the next day. RSI is now trading at 87. Now remember the textbooks are trying to tell us that above 70 we should sell but here the RSI is approaching 88 and by 
the fact that we understand this from a different perspective, we know that any instrument trading above 69.1 is pretty much displaying a lot of strength and should actually, one can expect a continuation of prices to the upside as long as the RSI is above 69.1. Let's fast forward to the next day. This is now September 27th. The stock drops down 5%. RSI is still at 82. Or let's call it 82.5. Still good in terms of strength above 69.1. We take a look at the next day. Now this is September 28th, 2017. The stock moves 24%. It's now trading just under $11 your RSI is at 87. The textbooks tell you to sell, but we know that anything above 69.1 is pretty much demonstrating strength. So we have a reason to continue holding. Of course, we can take profits along the way, but this does not mean we, we sell our entire position. There's no, re there's no reason to sell the entire position when the stock is trading above 69.1. 69.1 because that is where a stock goes into a very strong move. Let's fast forward to the next day. We can see that now the stock has gained another additional 16, 17%. The RSI is at 89.5. All right. If we take a look at the next day, now we are in October 2nd. The stock gains 2%. And the RSI is still at about 89.85. Let's fast now. The stock is trading just under $14. Now remember we started this with the stock trading at $350. Now it is at $14 in a couple of days. Let's fast forward to the next day. And on the next day we can see that it is unchanged pretty much. Up about $0.05. Cents, still trading around $14 dollars RSI is at 89.91 in other words the higher the RSI goes in my opinion the stronger the stock has a chance of moving higher let's take a look at the next day this is now October 4th the stock takes a drop down about let's call it 5% and that is for October 4th. Fast forward to October 5th. The stock turns around and gains 14, 15%. RSI is now at 86. Fast forward to the next day. Now the stock gains another additional 10%. It's now trading just under $16. RSI is at 88.5 fast forward to the next day now this is now after the weekend the stock opens up on a Monday October 9th gains another 33% now we are trading as high as $23 closing at 21 RSI is now at 92.55 now the textbooks were telling us to sell here when the stock was trading in the four five dollar range and what I try and teach is that the RSI above 69.1 is just a sign of strength in other words R S I the S is for strength and so it is relative strength index the higher this the RSI the higher the strength is what I'm trying to to bring across so let's fast forward this to the next day this is now October 10th believe it or not the stock gains another additional 30 percent 32 percent gain now the RSI is at 95 now remember this is an extreme case but the RSI is at 95 let's call it 95 it is actually 94.98 Take a look at what happened the next day. The stock gaps up again and gains another 
17% gain. Now the high is at the high for the day was at 38 and closes at about 32 32 33. RSI is now at 69, no, 96.01. Let's take a look at what happened the next day. Now, the next day we see a huge drop. The stock drops down almost 38%. And this is where the RSI moves back below 69.1. So, if you bought here, when the RSI jumped above 69.1 and you stayed on until the RSI moved back below 69.1 you had a chance of getting out of this stock from the four five dollar range to the lower 20s just by understanding that as long as the stock was above 69.1 it was strong on the other hand if you go by the textbooks what the textbooks are telling us is we should have sold the stock here at about four dollars so just remember sometimes some of the textbooks are gonna be wrong in some of their explanations as to how to use some of these technical parameters for example here we can see clearly that as long as the RSI is above 69.1 expect any instrument that you are trading to be sideways to outright bullish eric mwad with mother.com oh by the way let me do the current daily chart just to see what happened so you can see after the stock broke down below 69.1 the stock has dropped since then after coming off the 69.1 threshold we've seen a current move as of yesterday there was a bounce about more than 45 percent bounce because the stock came back to test the rsi lows line but that, then again that's a subject for a different video we can see double bottom support here before the 45 percent gain yesterday and today we saw a shallow pullback but anyway the moral of this video is be careful with the education you find out there some of the education is clearly wrong the explanation for the rsi has been pretty much tainted when stocks are above 69.1, they are to be bought. Oh, by the way, one other thing I thought to mention is, so we can see here that this entire move took place. Of course, as we've seen with the RSI holding above 69.1. Such a big move from about 350 to the highs here of about 38. So 3.5, 38. That's a huge move. All this happened while the RSI was above 69.8 on the daily. So what I failed to mention here was that if we take a look at the same time period, we take a look at the weekly, we can see that the weekly was also adding energy because the weekly RSI throughout this process was also trading above 69.1 also we'll see that the monthly chart throughout this process we can see the monthly chart here as of the highs here at 38 by october 11th the rsi on the monthly was also above 69.1 so you had the monthly charts above 69.1 you got your weekly charts above 69.1 and then you also had your daily charts above 69.1 which is why we see such a big move so remember if all the major time frames or if some if not all of the major time frames are showing the rsi above 69.1 you can expect so we see that it wasn't only that the daily was very strong here the weeklies were strong the monthly chart was strong and this might explain why we had this explosive run so it's just something to think about whenever you see a stock trading above 69.1 and even here we can see that on the monthly this move came to an end when the rsi moved back below the 69.1 threshold we can see that on the weekly the move came to an end when the rsi finally moved back below 
69.1. Eric Mwadith, Mother .com. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E A C S. Mwah. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Yeah!